I mean, going along with all the valuable information that we get from TikTok, believe it or not, <laughs> not everybody looks good with a middle part. <laughs> and also, um, you know, the beauty industry and fashion industry is changing so quickly. You don't want to back yourself into a corner of like, oh, I'm always going to do this middle part because that's going to be cool for a little while and then something else is going to come into play. So you would not believe how many people come in and are like, do I have to get rid of my skinny jeans and do I have to switch my part? I don't think my hair can do that. <laughs> um, so don't believe everything you hear on TikTok. Hey everybody, you're now listening to Cup of Queens with Paige and Saray, and we're so excited to talk with the hair queen herself, Anna, the owner of A Day Salon. Anna talks with us about upcoming hair trends, common hair mistakes, and what it means to her to work in a female-dominated industry. Anna has so many years of experience in the industry, and it was so fun to get the opportunity to chat with her. So grab your cup and enjoy. Thanks. How are you doing? Good, how are you? We're good. good. We're so excited to talk to you. I feel like this has been on our bucket list for a long time. I go to Madeline. Okay, I, I thought that you looked familiar. I always get like a little bit nervous about things like this. Like hopefully there's, I don't know, something valuable I can say to people. <laughs> You're gonna be great. Nothing You're gonna be great. to be nervous about. <laughs> we are just excited to hear about how you even got into this industry and just your experience. I think there's yeah. so much to learn from that. So let's start there. I mean, tell us about yourself and how you started this business. Yeah. Um, well, I've been doing hair for a really long time. Um, I graduated from the Aveda Institute in 2009, um, which just makes me feel really old even saying that out loud. <laughs> Um, but I've done a number of different things. I worked at a big Aveda concept salon in the twin cities. I've done chair rental. I've been an instructor. Um, I've worked at different salons in Fargo. Um, and I had reconnected with a friend of mine that was working at a day. Um, you know, we kind of, we both ended up back in Fargo Moorhead from St. Paul and we would do each other's hair wherever we were at in each other's kitchens and she had started working here and I came to get my hair done and I was like oh my gosh I want to work there um and I sat down with the former owner Emily and to make a long story short it ended up with me buying the salon she was kind of looking for someone to take over so honestly it wasn't something that I was even really searching for it was always something that I had kind of had in the back of my head as maybe an option for someday um but I always pictured myself starting it from the ground up, not purchasing something existing. But a lot of the things Emily already had in place were kind of in line with what my vision would be. And so one thing led to another and yeah, I don't know. That's Here we are today. <laughs> That's so yeah. cool. Everything just really fell into place. That's exciting. Yeah. I, I was always the girl who said I was never moving back to Fargo Moorhead. <laughs> and then my husband who was from Moorhead had a job opportunity to come back and for whatever reason, we just, you know, both felt like really peaceful about that decision. And so when this all came up, it was kind of like, okay, well, maybe this is meant to be, this is why I'm back, I guess. So Feels yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, love it. I think being in the beauty industry would be so much fun and just so exciting because it's ever changing and there's always new things and new trends coming. And so, you know, kind of talking about that, even to transitioning into the fall, yeah. What different upcoming trends that you're seeing or maybe even some of your favorite current trends yeah I mean this could be a little bit salon specific just because it's kind of what we specialize in but I do feel like we're still seeing a lot of the kind of lived in looks with hair color so things that are going to be lower maintenance um you know balayage things don't that don't have like a super harsh line so that if people want to or need to come in you know less times per year they have the option to do that um, going into fall, we definitely see a lot more of what, what we'd call like a reverse balayage. So instead of going lighter with your balayage, kind of bringing the base a little darker and pulling some of the darker colors back into it, or maybe toning your summer blonde into something that's a little bit warmer or, you know, more caramely is a word that we will start to hear a lot of in the coming weeks and months here. So. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I've heard. Does that your question? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it does. Okay. I hear. 
TikTok is where I think all great information comes from and sometimes all great information. But I heard on TikTok that they were saying a big trend within color is going to be just like flat, solid color, like really not a lot of dimension. So if you're blonde, you're fully platinum, or if you're brown, like you're fully brunette and not having really any kind of pulls of highlights. Are you seeing that? Or is that like a weird TikTok thing that I saw? Um, we <laughs> have not seen that necessarily like in the salon, in our chairs. Um, you know, typically personally, if, you know, even if I have a brunette who wants to be all one color, color I'll have some sort of dimension in there even mm -hmm. if it's just ever so slight I just I think that it makes the color look like more rich and I don't know better but I mean we're also in Fargo Moorhead so we typically get the trends very last out of everybody so I wouldn't say that we're necessarily seeing that in our chairs currently it could be something that's coming I'd be surprised if everybody starts switching to that just because you know it's just yeah. People have to spend more time getting their hair done if they're doing something like that, that requires more upkeep with like that solid, oh, solid right. line. So especially if you're blonde, I'm I was like, gonna man, say, yeah. I don't know that I'm going to be jumping on board with that one. <laughs> also like think yeah. for me, that would be so damaging, right? To your hair. If you're just extremely platinum, right. All the time. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it just, it, without getting like too much into like chemistry and technical things. Yeah. Basically anytime you're putting, I mean, we call it lightener, which is the nice way of putting it, but it's bleach, right? We're removing all the pigment from your hair to get it to that blonde color that everybody loves. And if you're coming in every six weeks, there's just so many more opportunities for that bleach to get overlapped with other color. And yes, then it compromises your hair. So <laughs> yes, it's probably not the healthiest option op way to go. So Mm -hmm. All right. Well, fingers crossed. I mean, crossed. TikTok, I love TikTok. There's always just like, <laughs> it just sparks yeah. your, you know, thought about, no, would I do that? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So talk to us a little bit on how you, because you've had so much experience with, you know, the different just realms that you have been within this industry. So talk to us a little bit on how you have seen the industry change and evolve over the time that maybe you were first going to school and just getting your feet wet with this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I was thinking about that as I was kind of reading through the questions before the call. And I guess the first thing that came to my mind is that really like COVID has changed a lot in the industry. Um, not just even, I don't know, I guess since I started here, I just feel like you know, when I first started nights and weekends were absolutely a mandatory part of the schedule. And it still is a very important part of your schedule in this career, just because you need to be available when your clients are available. Mm -hmm. But with COVID and so many people working from home and having the ability to work remotely and having more flexibility in their schedules, or, you know, maybe quitting work to stay home with their kids because they had to, we're seeing a lot, a lot more people that are wanting to come during the daytime hours. Um, so to me, to answer your question, that's one of the biggest things that I've seen is just kind of how and when people are scheduling their appointments, um, because of the rest of the world changing in so many ways. Mm -hmm. that makes so, sense. Yeah. And that's great insight yeah. for anyone who is maybe thinking about getting into this business. I mean, nights and weekends might be a deal breaker, but having that little piece of information that that it's possible to do without that that could be yeah. well and don't get me wrong like when you first start you've got to do nights and weekends because that's when a lot of the new clients are coming yeah. in but it just seems like it's not as necessary moving forward as you kind of establish those relationships with your clientele so yeah, yeah. that's a great point I'm just like yeah. thinking to COVID and I'm like I remember because you like obviously couldn't get your hair done for mm -hmm. so long and then Everything, yeah. like once people could start going back into the salons I think everyone's books were just full like chuck full but anyway we're oh so. <laughs> uh, yes yeah, yeah. hopefully never going back yeah, <laughs> lived and learned <laughs> <laughs> so what about to just kind of talking again on the the wavelength of clients and what are different misconceptions that you hear from your clients regarding hair care or you know I guess beauty whatever that may be yeah. Well, I mean, going along with all the valuable information that we get from TikTok, believe it or not, <laughs> not everybody looks good with a middle part. <laughs> and also, um, 
you know, the beauty industry and fashion industry is changing so quickly. You don't want to back yourself into a corner of like, oh, I'm always going to do this middle part because that's going to be cool for a little while. And then something else is going to come into play. So, um, that's just kind of like a funny one. People, (laughs) you would not believe how many people come in and are like, do I have to get rid of my skinny jeans? And do I have to switch my part? I don't think my hair can do that. (laughs) Um, so don't believe everything you hear on TikTok. Um, but other than that, I think the, one of the things we get a big uh, question about all the time is how often am I supposed to shampoo my hair? Um, and so I think it's probably not the best option to shampoo your hair every day, but I always tell people like, you got to do what's best for you. If you are, you know, working out hard every day or your hair is really fine and you know, you feel like a grease ball and you just can't push it through today to, you know, shampoo your hair every day. I mean, it's not going to be the best for it, but it's not going to be the worst for it. You know, not everybody can go on the flip side. Not everybody can go seven days between shampoos. I mean, that's something that you kind of have to work yourself into. Um, So I think that's one of the biggest things that people come in with questions about. Um, And it's kind of just coaching them through what's best for them because of their hair type and then tools that they can use to kind of help them if they're wanting to push it longer between their shampoos. Mm. What? Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I was going to ask the same question you were going to ask. <laughs> well, I was going to ask because I like dry shampoo is my favorite thing ever. I think Sarah and I both use it religiously. So what is your favorite brand or like what's a few different options, both high end and maybe like lower middle of the road? Yeah. So Gosh, I mean, I'm a creature of habit and I'm also a huge skeptic. So I won't believe things until I try it myself and either prove it right or prove it wrong. So um, we still kind of live and die by the PhD uh, dry shampoo in the living proof line. Um, Mm. I just love it so much. (laughs) Um, It's really good. It's clean. It's not like it doesn't have a you know, an overwhelming fragrance at all, which when you're using something every day, multiple days in a row, um, but that's an important part of it too, is the fragrance. So, you know, I hate to like say this when I recorded, but I tried getting on board with the Unite ones because we carry the Unite line here as well. And I just don't love it. And I find myself going back to the PhD one. Um, Another that our marketing coordinator loves is the IGK line dry shampoo. Um, They have a couple different ones. I can't remember the specific one that she uses, um, but I know that's a really good one also. But yeah, I just really love the living proof one. I like that you said it's clean because I think that's such a such a big buzzword right now. Mm -hmm. Like I have been really looking into items that are less fragrant, less overwhelming. Yeah. And I think that can be a big, um, a big factor in people's hair care. And yeah. I would imagine that you've seen a lot of mistakes, if you will, or things that people use that they think is really good for them or that they don't realize how maybe damaging it can be. So what are some examples yeah. of hair mistakes that you have seen? Um, well, one of the biggest, well, first of all, shampooing your hair too much. I mean, I had a girlfriend who was shampooing multiple times a day and she would come in and be like, why is my hair so dry in the ends? Um, and so when we kind of talked through what her routine was, I was like, you cannot be shampooing your hair that much. Like it's making your hair so dry. So you can shampoo your hair too much. Um, also one of the things, and I think there's some kind of stuff going around on social media about this right now too, is Olaplex. Um, Olaplex is really is a really incredible product line, um, for the right person. Um, you know, it's, it's a really incredible product line. However, if you like hair is made up of protein and a lot of the repair lines, which Olaplex is one of them are going to have bond builders and tons of protein packed into the product to help to rebuild the hair. But if you use too much protein for too long of a time, it's actually going to do the reverse of what you want it to do. And it's going to cause your hair to feel really like dry and can cause some breakage. So, you know, again, Olaplex is great. I'm not saying don't use it, but you can definitely overuse it. So maybe switching your products out every once in a while, if you've been kind of on like that Olaplex, like heavy protein product train for a while. I am using that. Oh, so (laughs) it's great. It's so good. We have it on our back bar. We sell it in the salon. It's fantastic. 
Great. Just also, also, I think sometimes people think like, oh, my hair is blonde. I need, you know, something with protein to repair it. Yeah. Yes, that can be true for a lot of br- blondes, but it, you could switch to like something for moisture and see just as many benefits as something that's kind of reparative. So I just love the way it smells. And uh, like you said, <sighs> yeah. I feel like I always just buy the same stuff because it's easy, but now I'm going to like buy mix it else. up. Do you yeah. think it is? Really, <laughs> is it beneficial to kind of trick your hair into doing something different? Like, is there a benefit of changing your products? I don't think that there's necessarily anything scientific to back that up, but I do think that it's good to switch it up every once in a while just to, I mean, it's just going to give you a different feel or maybe, you know, again, maybe you didn't realize that your hair needed moisture, but you switched to a moisturizing shampoo and conditioner and all of a sudden your hair is feeling amazing, you know? So I do think it's good to switch it up every once in a while. Although again, I don't think there's anything really scientific to back that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. If you're ever on a deserted Island, which I mean, probably not, but just (laughs) just, thinking out loud, what would be those five products that you would just have to bring with you? Yeah. Well, dry shampoo is the number one. Um, (laughs) so I kind of made a list earlier. So I put, um, so seven seconds leave in conditioner. So basically something that's a heat protectant. If I'm on a deserted Island, I'm probably not curling my hair every day, but in my head, I picture it's somewhere tropical. So you'd have UV protection and also, um, and just easier to brush through. So I put, um, seven seconds leave in conditioner, any sort of, you know, creamy heat protectant type of product, um, dry shampoo, hairspray, and then these aren't necessarily styling products, but I put a good brush and a teletype <laughs> or Ooh, something to like throw my hair up on top of my head. Oh yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I, so I was at the bells and blooms. Event. Oh God. And, um, your booth, everyone there was obsessing over this hairbrush that you guys have and was just yes. so incredible it is. And I feel like that is such a like staple thing that Often, like, I always just buy ones from Target or here or there or whatever. And so I was, like, so fascinated with how much everyone was hyping up this brush. Well, it's so funny because, you know, as hairstylists, we kind of, like, we get a little picky about our tools just because we're using them a million times a day. They're in and out of, like, the barbicide and cleanser and all this stuff. So we really need something that's going to stand up to what we're doing, but also something that we want to use ourselves at home. So we started using these brushes and we just loved them. And then for last year's Bells and Blooms event, I was trying to think of something we could put in the little beauty bundle that would be applicable to the most amount of people. Um, And so we threw those brushes in there and it was so fun to come back this year because I I was, I was thrilled that people loved the brush because I, we love them, but um, yeah, I just, I didn't realize there was going to be as much hype around those brushes, but they are really, truly the best. Yeah. <laughs> wait, do you have one? No, but oh. I need to get one. Like I it's, this was my first experience hearing about it. So I was like, wait, what a brush. It's, it, and it's like a $20 brush or something. I mean, it's not that expensive. It's, um, it's part of the wet brush line. So wet brushes were, you know, a huge craze for a while. Um, but they were the ones with the, Oh, I don't know how to explain it. Kind of like the softer, like collapsible, um, like center where the bristles were coming out. This one doesn't have that. So it stands up a little bit better if it's in and out of water a lot, because a lot of times those will crack and break after a while. Um, and it just like feels really good on your scalp. (laughs) Um, we are going to have to link that. Like I want yeah. the episode, we will link it so people can go shop yeah. it because I've just, it was just hilarious to me how people were up in arms about this brush. Like, I know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, was. it was really fun to see. Yes. I would happily share the link to our favorite $20 hairbrush. <laughs> gonna, yeah, right, please do. We will be posting. Yes. Um, and I, I mean, Aside from the brush, I think something cool that you get to do with in your career is you get to empower people to feel really good Mm -hmm. about themselves, whether it's buying just a great brush or giving them, you know, that look that is going to make them feel confident. But I'd love to hear from you as to how you feel you have been able to empower both men and women of your clients or just even in the community. Mm Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think a lot about this just because depending who you ask and who you talk to, I mean, beauty can be such a, 
like superficial thing, um, that people will, you know, say they don't care about or, you know, comments like that. But yes, it's something that's on the outside, but I think it's something that can give you so much confidence day in and day out. Um, you know, I think when you get ready for the day and you feel good about yourself, whether it's something on the inside or the outside, um, it's just going to give you a better attitude, which is then going to spread to others in a better way. Um, and give you more confidence throughout your day to, you know, tackle what whatever it is that you're tackling. I mean, even if you're a stay at home mom, like you can know how to put in a cute ponytail, like, you know, you're going to feel better when you're at the park. I mean, any, anything you're doing. Um, and so I just think that helping people to look their best does translate to the inside and just helps them to feel their best and be able to be them their best selves day in and day out. So. Mm -hmm. Amen. I couldn't agree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know yeah. it's like for me. And I feel yeah. like for you too, if you look good, again, you just, you feel so much better. You're happier. You're more willing to take on the world. And that's yeah. fair. I think yeah. that's been a big, big buzzword too with COVID, honestly. Mm -hmm. I think everyone got a little bit more into self care. And, but it, it is true. It's having the ability to reserve a time slot for you to go get something for yourself to get your hair done or to get your makeup done, whatever it is. It's actually a you time thing that mm -hmm. I always, I love going to the salon it's and just sitting best. and being like, this is, I'm here for the next two hours and I'm going to just live in it. Yep. Totally. Absolutely. And that time looks different for everybody. I mean, I have some clients that are like needing to get in and out fast. And so time is the most important thing to them. I mean, I love to talk and I love building relationships with my clients, but there's times where that space is better to just like be silent and let them enjoy their time and not talk at all. So, um, you know, it is, it's, it's definitely a self-care thing and that looks different for different people depending on, you know, where they're at. So. Yeah, absolutely. So just kind of going back on that, so talking about different client success stories and different things that you've seen over the years, is there a particular success story that really stands out to you? Um, that really makes you think, you know, wow, I made a difference or we as a team made a difference. Oh man. Um, gosh, I don't know if I can think of like one, you know, mind blowing moment that's happened, but I think like, also I'm at the point in my career where a lot of my clients are people that I've really seen for a long time. Mm -hmm. Um, and so you have less of that, like, I shouldn't say less of a big impact, but you know, less of a big impact just because you're really close with each other and you just learn what their wants and needs are and what their boundaries are as far as, um, what they're willing to do with their hair. But, um, I would just say like, anytime I do have a new client or I make a big change on an existing client, even just getting like little Instagram messages, like, Aww. you know, recently it was, I got one that was like, I just wanted you to know, I've never been able to describe what I wanted in my hair, but like what you did was what I wanted without me having to explain that. Like even just those little messages can be such a day maker, mm -hmm. um, you know, just to feel validated in that I know what I'm doing technically, but also that, you know, I am helping someone else to feel empowered or making their day. So yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. And I actually, I think that's a really great reminder for clients and people who are in the chair to mm -hmm. take that time and say those things. Cause I think about that all the time. I mean, I just shout from the mountaintop to all my friends that I have the best stylist and she does a great job, but I love that you bring that up because it is so rewarding to hear it from yourself. So I'm just, yeah. like, I need yeah. to start letting, letting them know how great they're doing. And, um, I, you have a great team. You have an incredible staff. And I can imagine that anytime working in a female dominant industry, there can be challenges and honestly, any industry. But I think that's something that we perceive oftentimes is that, oh, working with women is going to be hard. But it seems like your group has been just so incredible. And so I would love to hear what what you do or what you feel like has been successful in having such a great team and strong culture? Yeah, I mean, that's hard. Um, I mean, working with all women can be challenging, you know, there's a lot of emotion. Um, but I think 
I mean, first of all, one thing that Emily really taught me was, um, <laughs> I hope it's okay. I'm saying again, I'm like, is it okay to say this on a recording? Um, uh, slow to hire, quick to fire was one of the pieces of advice that I got. Um, and I think I just, she really would take intentional time to sit down with people before adding them to the team. And, um, I've tried to do that moving forward just to make sure. And honestly, I say it as I want to make sure this is a good fit on both ends. I want to make sure this is a good fit for the salon, but I want to make sure this is a good fit for you. Like we are a really close team. We work really well together. It's very much a team environment. Um, you know, a lot of salons, you walk in and you see people like not sharing formulas and oftentimes you'll see us, you know, doing a consultation together. I mean, even those of us who have been doing hair for 12, 13, 14 years, like, Hey, can you give me a second opinion on this? So I try to be really transparent from the beginning with people, um, that that's kind of the way that our team operates. Um, and from there, I mean, I'm just a firm believer that you got to make things work when you're at work. I mean, you don't have to be best friends with people outside of the salon, but I mean, you're in your workspace a lot of times more than you're awake in your home space. And so you got to do whatever you need to, to be respectful, um, you know, of your, of your coworkers to each other and clients, um, to be able to, you know, have things flow as smoothly as possible when you're, when you're in that space. So, yeah, I think that's really good. Really, really great. Yeah. It's really great yeah. to remember that too. Cause I know sometimes it's like, sometimes easier said than done, yeah. you know, but to it really is so easier that. said than done. And especially man, like, especially in this world we're living in right now, it's just like, so negative yeah. all the time. And I read a book recently that was like, whatever attitude you bring will be multiplied. And I found myself really being guilty of that. Like just like letting like all the stress around me affect me. And so I've been really focusing on trying not to do that because yeah, I mean, I can definitely just either negatively or positively impact, you know, your surroundings um, on a day-to-day basis. So, yeah, it's a great yeah, reminder yeah. for us all, because I think l- quite literally everyone could relate to that. <laughs> yeah. So last question before we talk about how people can connect with you would be, what does a queen mean to you? Oh yeah. Um, uh, gosh, I know. I don't know. How do I define that? Um, I guess I would just say somebody who's really true to their self and is mindful and respectful of those around them, whatever, you know, atmosphere that may be in. Mm -hmm. Perfectly said with what (laughs) our last discussion was that coincides beautifully. So Mm -hmm. well said, and we do have a game for you, but we're going to be sending it to you and we're going to be sharing your results on social media. So Ooh, yeah, an email for that and everyone listening, be on the lookout for Anna's answers on oh. different questions. Um, we'll give you a little teaser. It's we want to get your take on what hairstyles you would recommend for what events. So okay, go to our social to find that. But before we sign off, tell everyone where they can find you, connect, follow, and just be involved. Yeah, um, I would say, um, I mean, our Instagram is our biggest tool for communication. And then obviously that syncs with our Facebook. So, you know, if we have updates of any kind or events coming up or things like that, it's definitely going to be on the social media. Um, that that's for sure the most relevant place to find information. We also have our website, which has all of our, you know, bios. Um, if you're a bride, you can submit an inquiry on there, um, for wedding hair, things like that. But for sure, the most up-to-date relevant information is going to be on our social media. So Instagram primarily, but Facebook as well, um, would be the best place for that. Perfect. We'll link all that. So it's super easy for people to find. And we're so excited to release your episode. So thank you so much. Yeah, thanks guys.